The immune system is a complex network which defends the body from attacks from invaders such as parasites and, yes, bacteria. Once the first barrier of the immune system, the skin, is damaged, bacteria take the opportunity to enter the cut. Lads, lads, cut, cut! Wait a minute, we just started filming! No, you fool, I mean cut, cut! Here, I'll use this antiseptic wipe. It won't sting. Once inside the skin, they duplicate about every 20 minutes. The immune system's first line of defence are called macrophages or guard cells. The macrophages kill the bacteria by swallowing them. Mmm, one of my five a day! In this case, however, the bacteria are too numerous, so backup help is needed. It's time for the neutrophiles also known as white blood cells, to enter the battle. Oh, she hasn't fallen again, has she? Macrophages also request water from blood vessels to be released to help fight the enemy. This results in a slight swelling in the wound. Are you okay? I think it's starting to swell. If the infection continues, it's now time for the brain of the immune system to assist. The dendritic cells. They enter the battle and take samples from the bacteria, which they then present on their outer layers. Now the cells travel to the nearest lymph node, where they activate helper and killer T cells. The killer T cells then travel to join the battle. actually really starting to sting. Lots includes dogs, popcorn and country music. Shall we? We shall. The helper T cells combine with the dendritic cells based on the information already taken from the bacteria. <laughs> this then results in the production of tiny proteins called antibodies. The antibodies move to the battle scene, attach themselves to the bacteria, completely disabling them. It's now left to the macrophages to sweep up the few remaining bacteria. Memory cells remain in the body to defeat any future infections. This is why we don't get measles twice, for instance.